The very first mention of Star Citizen was made in late 2012, when a website appeared offering interested parties the opportunity to become involved in Chris Roberts' latest game. It teased, mentioning his previously beloved Wing Commander series, Freelancer and Privateer, and requested the reader's help, as Chris always does, asking you to have faith in his experience, knowledge and passion to create another game, one he can be proud of. Chris mentioned that he'd been working on a game for a little under a year and was going to announce it on 10th of October 2012. In reality, this was the beginning of an incredibly successful crowdfunding campaign, and in many ways, the teasing, confident yet humble approach Roberts displays on this very first announcement is continued today and helps sustain the crowdfunding campaign as it zips past the $120 million mark. Chris makes it personal from day one. Indulge me, he says. I would like to create a world for you. Even he couldn't have imagined how that message would be savoured by old and new space sim fans alike. The 15th of October saw the What Is It video appear. This is one many newer backers probably haven't seen, but it's worth checking out, simply to see Chris Roberts at his absolute cheesiest best. We love this shit Chris, never change. Hi, I'm Chris Roberts. Ever since I saw Star Wars as a wide-eyed eight-year-old, I dreamt of being a hotshot pilot saving the galaxy or a lovable rogue making my way across the cosmos. It inspired me to make Wing Commander and has influenced everything I've done since then. Ten years ago, after 20 years of making games, I was burned out so I took a break, but I never stopped playing games nor loving them. And now, I'm ready to come back, and I'd like to show you something I've been working on. With the launch of fundraising, the RSI site struggled to cope, and in order to keep things moving, and because the community had suggested using it, Kickstarter was added as an option for pledging. It's easy to write this early decision off simply as a way of raising funds, but it's also an early example of the community, eager to back the project, coming up with ideas to help keep the funds rolling. This community support would prove invaluable to CIG in coming years a sense of collective effort to raise funds and encourage others to take interest in the game would help to maintain its profile in social and gaming media. The RSI website in the early days was painfully basic, focused entirely on stating the number of backers, the goal and how much had been raised so far. As you can see it's a far cry from the information festooned RSI site we are used to today. But from day one, Cloud Imperium games were reaching out to the community. Forums were up, videos available, and the all-important engagement with fans had begun. This was no ordinary crowdfunding campaign. CIG didn't just want your money, they wanted your ideas and your moral support, as much as they needed that pledge money. The $2 million mark was set, not to fund the game, but to prove to potential investors that there was a market for it, in a genre which for the past 10 years had seen precious few good games released. CIG were producing high quality content and offering it up for our consumption, and boy did we eat it up, especially the first full cinematic trailer. What CIG couldn't have anticipated was the speed at which news of this ambitious new project would spread, and despite early RSI site problems, the Kickstarter launch was a success, and by midnight on October 19th, Star Citizen had reached 30% of its target funding. On October 22nd, Chris participated in a Reddit AMA. The AMA helped to stoke the embers of Star Citizen, with Freelancer and Wing Commander fans jumping at the chance to quiz Roberts directly. As Roberts himself said, his vision for Star Citizen has a lot of Freelancer in it. But whilst fans ate up the hype, Chris was careful to manage expectations on certain elements, ensuring people understood that there would be an upper speed limit, and that some things would be reined in for gameplay purposes, and occasionally physics and realism would be ignored if they got in the way of fun. Importantly, for these early few weeks into the campaign, CIG had made it clear we'd be in the universe, part of it, but not the saviour of it, but worlds wouldn't revolve around us as the main character. We may, if we try our hardest, be able to nudge the economy, but we would never run it. 
we'd be able to have big ships, but never the biggest. And we'd be making our way through events we don't control, trying to make the best of what befalls us. Right off the bat, CIG were more than just a games company based around one man. Whilst Chris Roberts was undoubtedly the name that caught people's attention, the staff themselves were pushed up front and centre, encouraged to engage with backers, whether it was sound engineers like Martin Galway or the excitable Eric Peterson. Fans would come to know these people, converse with them on the forums and even meet with them at events. People weren't just pledging money to CIG, they were putting their hopes in them to deliver a game they'd been dreaming of, just as Roberts and his team had. They were on board with CIG, and it was a small team of staff who would help keep them there. CIG staff weren't hiding behind a company logo. They were coming out to talk to backers, talking about themselves, their work and what they would bring to Star Citizen. This wasn't an entirely new approach to crowdfunding, but it was rarely done in gaming circles to the same extent. Access to not only developers, but to people behind the scenes, writers, marketing, production, sound engineers. This was crazy, but it was a clever crazy, and it clearly worked. Throughout October 2012, video was released focusing on immersion, physics and scale of the game. The three cornerstones of Star Citizen in many ways as highlighted in the What Is It video. Interestingly, we weren't being spoken to like normal consumers. The team behind the game were happy to use jargon, give you technical information, and assumed you would either know what it was or would look it up. Well, I think immersion is really important for me because I think that you have to really visualize and create a very believable world. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I always sort of really push the visual fidelity is because I think that helps with the immersiveness. And the more immersive, the more connected you are to the experience, the more connected you are to the experience, I think the more fun the game itself will be. So uh, an example of that is if we're looking around at our character, we can see that you know, the character himself is you know, about 100,000 faces, which is about 10 times the detail of most uh, current day uh, AAA games are about 10,000 faces or so. And so that just allows you to have a little extra detail. The, the wires on his, uh, on his pilot outfit, the creases in the uniform, uh, and have it really stand up when you come in close and, and not uh, break down because it's too pixely. On October 25th, 2012, Star Citizen passed the initial half million dollar target set on Kickstarter in less than one week. In what would become a regular occurrence, stretch goals were announced and quickly toppled. Incredibly, the RSI site where crowdfunding had begun was outpacing Kickstarter and by the end of the month would raise $1.7 million, with the Kickstarter campaign bringing in an additional 750000 giving a total just shy of $2.5 million. For the very earliest members of the RSI community, a golden ticket was issued. This was a special thanks from CIG for helping to get the crowdfunding ball rolling, and was in the form of a plaque for your in-game hangar, a forum title, and a decal for your ship later on. For the estimated 40 to 50,000 golden ticket holders, this was a nice little pat on the back for being there right at the very beginning. As we enter November 2012, Chris appears alongside his family and friends in a final Kickstarter push video. As I've mentioned before, Chris made this personal from the start. He wants people involved, and he's more than happy to do whatever it takes to amuse, entertain and engage the community, if it helps to make his star citizen dream a reality. It's been a difficult campaign, but we're winning this thing, thanks to your efforts. Stretch goals are on the run, and it won't be much longer. We have two big targets left. 6,000 clicks out. Alpha Wing, I'll be needing a hit Kickstarter. Beta Wing, you'll be swarming the RSI pledge site. We need all of you. Tell your family. Tell your friends. Tell your pets if that's what it takes. Offer them upgrades, extra ships, whole new tiers, whatever gets us over the top. We have one week left. If we can defeat these two, then the war is won. We lost a lot of good web designers and artists getting this far. Don't let that be in vain. So man your ships, and let's teach these stretch goals what it means to mess with Squadron 42, for the Empire, for the PC, for the Space Sim.
throughout November we are seeing stretch goals fall, with names of confirmed planetary systems being announced. Odin, Tyrol, Kellogg, Goss, Ellis, Cathcart, Tal, Geddon, Callus, Stanton and Krell. Hitting stretch goals would become a community pastime. In mid-November, CIG released a clip showing off an early work in progress for the AI combat system for the game. This included early versions of the Vandal Scythe and the Anvil Aerospace Hornet fighting around a Bengal carrier and asteroids. Interestingly, looking back on this early work in progress version of the game, as the fighters move there are space or flight trails visible, but the eagle-eyed will also notice that the turrets on the Bengal are tracking the enemy fighters. Later that same day, the Kickstarter campaign would end, and 90,000 star citizens would have raised $6.2 million. $4.1 million from the RSI site, and $2.1 million from Kickstarter. With this total, they also unlocked the Bengal carrier. This total will further rise to $6.88 million by the end of the month. December 2012 saw the first ever Wingman's Hangar, and from the very first seconds of the show, Eric Peterson and Michael Moreland were asking for ideas for names for the show and wanting people to get involved. Production values may have been low, with Eric nearly bursting the microphone with his enthusiasm, but it was his friendly and approachable nature which drew people in. This show would go on to become a firm fan favourite, and would become immortalised in Hangars Around the Verse with Hangar Flare and posters. Your mic sucks balls. It says the mic's no good. What, is it too loud, too hot for you guys? No, not, not me, Mike. Uh, the mic. Here's it better? Oh, well, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, we're that... still figuring out how to get the levels all... Oh, it's too hot. Out. You know what? I can oh. fix that, actually. We were also treated to the first look at the Misc Freelancer with Chris and concept artist Jim Martin. This early version of the Freelancer would be revised constantly, especially the cockpit in coming years but it's interesting to note that the way the video is presented is very similar to the way future Jump Point magazines would be created, with sketches and explanations and discussions between Chris and staff. It's always better, I think, to have a kind of your foundation of where you want to go. Pretty awesome stuff, and uh, he's been working on the MISC uh, line of ships, which uh, the first one's the Freelancer, which uh, we had two very early sketches from Jim, and you all voted for them. And then at that point, uh, we said, okay, now let's go to um, the 3D model side, and that is what we're working on now. That now this is sort of the further development of the one that 75% of you preferred. Then, you know, as far as the weapons go, I think, you know, there's uh, four articulated uh, hard points, uh, class two hard points. And so those are sort of, I think of it as like a mini gun that's on an Apache helicopter or something. I'm doing a double engine here, but but um, for the revision of this engine, do you want to just go with one main engine on yeah, the other side? Yeah, I, I think one main engine on each side. So when uh, Jim's designing a ships here, I'm sort of also going, okay, think about, you know, we were just talking about putting a turret on the back. Well, the initial setup of the Freelancer doesn't include a turret, but there is a turret hard point. So we were saying, where would we put the turret? Uh, I would think the best place maybe a turret would be on the top, sort of rear facing. Uh, and that turret can be controlled uh, by, say, the pilot or someone in the co-pilot's chair here, or someone can actually go in and sort of man it. So that, that turret would be more like um, something on a B-17 or something, which would be kind of cool. Yes. I'm having a lot of fun with it because it's a level of detail and, and uh, fidelity that in the past games, I never, we never really got into it. It was more like, hey, that looks cool, and sort of went from there. Uh, but this, we actually think about how it needs to function inside the game. By the end of December, we'd finally have over 100,000 citizens and a total of $7.2 million pledged. 